My name is uh, Pris Kusmoa and I'm speaking direct from Tanzania. All the topics that we are going to discuss today will be to focus on understanding opportunities and the gaps that are found in <coughs> petroleum industry. And we'll be looking to the upstream, midstream and downstream. And some of the members are working on those domains. As I said, I have to introduce some of the members and I think I'll introduce a few of them. Well, I don't think if Professor Richard is in, but we'll have Professor Richard Rochengura. He is Associate Professor, Petroleum Engineering, Northern University of Science and Technology. He's also principal consultant at the Resto. He's also He's also organizer of the program or the training of the trainer project that was taking place in the University of Dodoma and the Udizim as well. Also, we have Dr. Shahid. Dr. Shahid is all the way from India. He's an activist and a campaigner. And I have to acknowledge him. He's one of the main sponsors of the program. He assisted us a lot to facilitate this program especially in video conferencing. We have tried everything, and he has always been positive to us, especially young people who want to bring some transformation in the country, especially to technology, leadership, and community engagement. So I thank him very much. He's also a lecturer of my classmate, known as Manfred Imanda, who is studying currently in India, in University. So he also, with us. Also, we have Madam Yvonne Do from South Africa. She has 33 years experience working with the industry, and she is currently MD at CNN Petroleum Equipment, found in South Africa. So she will have a lot of things to tell us today, and I'm happy she has always been very cooperative in facilitating this program. Okay, please. Allow me to appreciate everyone who is in, and I supreme appreciate all of you. Even if, if I could not mention your name, please accept my appreciation. Dear brothers, welcome on board. Dear sisters, welcome on board wherever you are. We are going to start our meeting, and also I will have my co-host. I cannot present all the time. I have my co-host, known as Mr. Paul Johanna. Paul Johanna, can you hear me please? Engineer Dora, can you hear me, please, madam? Yeah, all right, I can hear you properly. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Dora Ernest, uh, working with uh, TPDC, which is the national oil company in Tanzania. And uh, basically, I'm uh, concentrated on down, midstream and downstream projects. Uh, which deals with the infrastructure construction, connection of customers, and marketing of gas. Uh, I'd like to bring the panelists into uh, what we do as TPDC, as a national oil company, and what are the opportunities that are available within TPDC, within the industry, petroleum industry, and what's the gap that uh, I feel we are missing from our... <clears throat> Uh, from our graduates or maybe from our universities, which I think if they can work on it, we can improve the sector and we can fill up the gap and maximize the whole, the whole value chain of petroleum. Uh, as a national oil company, we are dealing with upstream and midstream and downstream projects. For the case of upstream, uh, we are dealing with the exploration, production, development of oil and gas. But up to date, we have just discovered only gas, uh, which is amounting to 57.54 TCF. Uh, this is total gas, which include uh, uh, offshore and, off and onshore gas. Most of the gas which has been discovered is from the offshore, which is deep sea, about 47 TCF, and the rest is from the onshore. But uh, since we discovered gas, uh, we have used it for almost 10 years now from uh, 2004, and mostly what is meant for power and the rest for industries and other uses. And the uh, contribution of uh, natural gas to the economy 
Pearl is consuming about 80% of the natural gas which is currently being produced. And actually we have two fields which are producing, uh, the Nas Bay gas fields and uh, Songo Songo gas fields. And 15% um, is being used for industrial application, mostly for power generation, which is capt captive power generation and uh, process heating. And the 5% is used for household and vehicles in form of CNG. That's what we do for the, for the, for the gas. But uh, for the midstream also, TPDC, we are also involved in the uh, processing of gas and uh, transportation of gas and distribution. So we have a subsidiary company called Gasco, uh, which is uh, well, undertaking operation and maintenance of the infrastructure. And uh, we have another subsidiary company called Tanwell, which is dealing with oil business. Though we haven't discovered oil, but uh, TPDC is responsible for maintaining strategic petroleum reserve for the country. So that will be involved in the importation of petroleum uh, product in the country and marketing the same. Uh, that is the overview of the business which we are actually doing in TPDC. And I've said that uh, for me, I'm concentrated on the midstream and downstream. So we are much more involved in the infrastructure development, marketing and distribution of gas. Uh, I'll quickly jump into the into the gaps which uh, exists between uh, the graduates which we have been receiving from the universities and uh, which you have been trained them in the industry. But you can see there is a there's something which is missing. I think from the curriculum point of view, though we have tried a lot to uh, to structure the curriculum basically with. Uh, with NACTE and uh, it's kindly up bringing that gap, filling up that gap, especially for the courses that have, have been offered with the uh, Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology. Because most of the universities like Dodoma and uh, Dar es Salaam University, they're more concentrated on the upstream part of. So much less is being uh, done on the midstream and downstream. But I appreciate DIT is bringing up a lot about midstream and downstream and they're trying to fill up the gaps. Uh, for the opportunities that exist as a graduate, uh, TPDC will usually receive a lot number of uh, graduates. Firstly, even before graduating, we usually receive, uh, we call it, they, can, they usually do the quality field works. After every year, the students will usually do uh, field works. So we usually receive field students. So we took them to, uh, processing plant to the pipeline operation and some will usually keep them in uh, in my directorate so we usually mentor them we we show them how we do things and they what need to be done in the industry and after they are graduating uh, we usually also take some of the graduate students uh, we call them we give them internship for one year and uh, there's a program we usually work with the ERB, that's the Engineering Research Board. Uh, we usually mean for mentoring the graduates for a period of three years. And soon I'll be back to you to finalize what you, you was presenting. And I'm happy, Professor, okay. now you can present to us. Professor Richard Luchengura, you have been working in different upstream uh, projects in the world also participated in different projects uh, that I mentioned earlier, and we're also consultant, also participating in different uh, projects in transformation of the petroleum industry in your country. Regarding the current uh, pandemic, COVID-19, how far is the industry affected with presence of COVID-19? And how do you think opportunity will be recovered soon after the pandemic has been over Please, can we hear your comment? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Priscus and uh, the organizers. Uh, this is a very good job. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm talking right from Norway. Uh, I, I like to approach this in um, slightly a different way. I will not say only because of COVID, but I, I just want you to know, and I believe everyone will uh, agree with me that uh, the petroleum industry or the energy and gas, uh, the, the oil and gas industry is a cyclic kind of industry. Uh, with my little experience, I've seen both 
when we have downtowns and when we have uh, ups. And um, we have seen different behaviors of the companies. And uh, I, 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 to my opinion, uh, uh, the companies don't learn, actually. They don't learn. Always when they are the, the things are good, they will hire, they will spend, and when things are down, they will fire people, they will not recruit anyone, and they will reduce everything, and they will do a lot of cost savings uh, during downtown. So that's circles. I've seen both circles uh, several times, and uh, the companies do not learn. But uh, uh, what I see now, the downtown came together with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which becomes very, very down to miners' uh, prices. So, so that is, is, is very hard to, to, to recover in, in the near future. But um, what I can see, we can be strategic. And uh, how do we benefit when it is down? And how do we benefit when it is up? Normally, the producers, the big producers, they lose when it is down because the prices are so down. But those who are importing, they should benefit. Uh, they should benefit from that such. The only problem is when I look at how it, it's going is when things are beginning to, to, to get up, uh, the, 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 those who should benefit, they really don't benefit because there are no strategies to how to benefit. And uh, I will bring it down now to individual graduates. So if you are studying and you are looking for a job, and it happens that when you finish and when you are looking for a job is during a downtown, it's a block. You don't see future. It becomes the worst industry ever. But at this point, if at a national level there were uh, some good strategies, how do we benefit like, as, as a country who imports oil? And maybe we have, uh, for example, I can give an example of Tanzania. Tanzania in, imports refined oil already. They don't import crude oil. So even the prices when they're low, they don't really get a big benefit of, of low prices. They, now they are a bit low, but they don't really get the benefit. They don't get uh, the value chain where, where people can work in a refinery, where people can do this and that. So because they import finished products, they don't have, they don't import crude, which can also, if they import crude, maybe they'll employ more young people. And they can maybe store more and they can use when things are up there, they can use which they bought at a low price, but there are no good strategies to help the graduates. So, so those are, that's a, just a picture of what is going on. And uh, I am in the industry. Uh, normally at times at, at this, times like this, even those who are employed are worried that they're going to lose their jobs because that's the trend. Normally people lose their jobs, some remain. And then when things are up, the company is higher again. And when things are down, people lose their jobs. So it is becoming unstable kind of industry, but it's because of lack of good strategies. Uh, I am also a talent hunter. I'm just talking this so that people can also discuss. Uh, I don't provide solutions, but I'm a talent hunter. And normally when I look at um, the way things are going now, and uh, when I recruit graduates, I normally look at their skills or sometimes I'll be blamed that why did you hire someone with a bachelor and left and leave someone with a master's or someone with very good grades? Uh, I didn't get a job when someone who, who don't, don't have necessarily good grades. I don't say grades are bad, grades are good. But uh, what we are really looking for a graduate is a skill. What are you good at? What can you really do at times like this? What can you contribute? What is the good side of you? So we need to know that. That's number one. So if you are a graduate, ask yourself, what are you good at? What am I good at? 
if you have one thing that you are good at and you capitalize in that, that thing will pay you. So, so that's number one thing you should have. And number two is we are in digital era. So we seeing digitalization. And uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, even we are relying more on digital solutions than before. We do our meetings. One a live example is this meeting. We are meeting the world through digital means. We are doing inspection in our platforms through digital means. So don't stay far from digitalization. I'm not, there's a difference between digitalization and social media. <laughs> you can be very good in social media, but very poor in digitalization. So stay very close to digital solutions because that is the next, um, that's the new life. The new life is. Thank you, Doctor. Could you allow me, please, to hand you up there and then I'll be back to you? Okay, thank you very much. I just uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I will contribute next. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we'll come back to you. Okay, going to our lovely mother, Yovindo. Can you please hear me, Madam Yovindo from South Africa? Madam Yovindo. Okay, we'll get back there. <clears throat> now let's go to engineer Eroho. He's from Nigeria. And as I said previous, he have been participated in different projects. Sorry. Especially for the working. Okay. Okay, thank you, Madam Wizin. Do you want me to carry on or do you want to go to somebody else first? Yeah, you have to carry on, please. Okay, sorry. Um, my name's Yvonne Dow, and I am originally from Scotland, but I came to South Africa quite a number of years ago, about 50 years ago, and um, now been 33 years in the petroleum industry. When I say petroleum industry, I mean more downstream industry. Uh, we, we have our company, um, CNN Petroleum Equipment, has supplied loading arms and couplings and loading facilities uh, to facilitate oil and gas industry to distribute uh, the fuel wherever they are uh, from marine to transportation. The difference between years ago and now is that years ago we uh, there, there was fewer, uh, how can you put it, there was, uh, just hold on just two seconds, I've just lost my track. Um, years ago, we had uh, terminals where the oil and gas industry had terminals and their terminals uh, um, were distributed throughout South Africa. And then eventually they decided to go contracting work. And that changed. And there was less jobs then. And then afterwards, they decided, okay, they're going to change completely again. And they're going to employ more people. And so I can understand from the gentleman that was speaking earlier, just now, that ch changes happen within the oil and gas industry all the time. And in the 33 years, we've had a huge amount of difference. We there's been many, many changes. Now it's been illness that has changed uh, 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 the sectors. But what we've got to do is we've got to strategize and see where are we better? What do we do that's going to make a difference? And what skills have we got that will make a difference? Years ago, people used to learn by uh, apprenticeship. Now today, people learn from universities. So the difference between the old school was learning over a period of four or five years. We as the universities, they learn four or five years in a university, but they haven't got the skill on hands down on learning. What can I, whatever I've learned within the industry, what can I implement? How can I change 
the way the oil and gas industry is direction is going. What skill can I bring to the table? So to me, the, the um, students have to change their way of thinking. They've got to diversify. They, in my opinion, everybody's wanting a job at BP, Total, Engine, whichever oil and gas company there is. But the problem is not all oil and gas companies have the, the funds to be able to bring in interns and let's face it, not every oil, oil company is educators. It's hard and it's very difficult to train people and it takes time to train people and it costs money to train people. But on the other hand, if you took your learning skills and you learned what the industry requires and you diversified and went to say one went to the, uh, you, you would now go to, first of all, the refinery. And then once you learned the flow of the refinery, then you would move yourself after a couple of months and you would go to the uh, terminal industry. And then after a couple of months again, you would move again and go to contracting. That way you would be able to see where your skills are and put yourself forward and say, right, now I'm better at projecting and so I will go into projecting or I will better at contracting or in consulting. So therefore, a person in the oil and gas industry uh, uh, students must decide from a, a young age, from when they start in the university, where do they want to be? Not just when there's an opening up and saying, okay, right, I want to go upstream or I want to go downstream. You've got to understand and see what direction do you have? What is your, what is your, your, your best speak? What, what can you do? To make a difference in this world and once you make a difference in this world you build up relationships you build up friends and you build up reputation and that's what it's all about thank you thank you madam Yovin. I'll, I'll be back to you soon thank you for the very nice contribution thank you okay allow me please to go to mr almia osman munge as I previously introduced him, he's from Plasco Limited. Plasco is a company here in Tanzania and also participated in different projects of oil and gas in our country. So we'd like to hear from you, Mr. Almeya Osman Munga, as a Chief Operation Officer at Plasco. How do Plasco participate uh, to help graduates and the recent graduates to reach competence level in the technologies that you utilize in your company, especially the pipeline technologies, you have fusion technologies, you supply H HDP pipes, high pressure pipes, which are also used with the different projects of gas domestication in our country. Please, can we hear from your please? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Um, thank you for having me on this panel. I'll give you a very quick uh, background about uh, Plasco first so you understand uh, what it is that we do. So we are primarily a, a plastic pipe manufacturing company based in Dar es Salaam. It's a local company. Uh, we specialize in HDP and PVC pipes. Uh, as far as this particular subject is concerned, we would be in line with manufacturing the gas pipes from HDPE. So some of you may have already worked with this, uh, with these kind of pipes, they're orange in color, sometimes also black in color. Um, gas pipes normally uh, tend to be uh, manufactured based on a number of standards. And uh, these are very stringent international standards that need to be followed. Um, one of the main reasons is not just to have the quality right, but I think everybody understands the importance of safety in this industry. Uh, from that perspective, it is very, very important that uh, manufacturing of any products that are going into the oil and gas industry uh, are actually following those international standards and meeting all the safety requirements uh, that are necessary to ensure success of the project and safety of the people. Um, this can be a big challenge. It is actually a big challenge in Tanzania at the moment because 
we do not have enough expertise at the moment uh, that allows us to bring in our local people, our local graduates who are coming out of schools and universities uh, with these qualifications to come and work in the industries. Now, we as a company, what are we doing about that? Um, we are, first of all, a very, very, uh, I would say, first line or front line uh, uh, people or contenders who promote local content. Uh, we, as a company, have employed mostly, I would say, probably 98% of our employees are Tanzanian and they're competent Tanzanians. But as uh, Yvonne just mentioned, you do not get to a stage like that overnight. It takes a lot of training, it takes a lot of dedication uh, from both sides, and it takes uh, cost. I mean, you have to spend money to get to that kind of level where people are competent enough, where you can let them loose and uh, they will perform in the same way that you would like any professional to perform in this industry. So we are, we are one, very proud that we do have a team like that, but uh, we are concerned that there aren't enough people in Tanzania who are able to come into that industry straight away with the right kind of experience. So we, on our side, do provide a lot of internships. We do provide a lot of training uh, to our people uh, in uh, pipe manufacture, but moreover, the quality assurance side and installations. As a company, we are not just a manufacturer. We are more a solution provider. So we manufacture the pipe, but we also provide uh, technical services in terms of advice. And we also do some installations uh, for, I would say, downstream uh, distribution projects. We do not work in the upstream and midstream uh, range because the pressures are too high. Uh, our pipes are designed to work up to uh, 25 bar pressure. So we are mostly in the distribution side where pressures are lower than that. Um, so what, what we do is we bring in people, we try to train them. Now, in terms of a gap, I will just be very brief, so maybe later on we can discuss it more. In terms of the gaps, what we see at the moment is that in the schools, in the universities, it is highly academic. It is a highly academic uh, background anyway, or, a, or an environment, which is fine. But it needs to change in that it must allow a lot of practical experience to come in. Because without that, uh, a certificate is, is good, but it's not enough for one to come in and say, now I'm ready to, to work in this industry and I, I know everything that needs to be known. So that is where the training aspect comes in. Um, so what, what I always encourage uh, our fellow Tanzanians is that please be open-minded. Do not consider the certificate as your means or your passport to entry in the industry. At the end of the day, you need to be able to show us that you can get your hands dirty, you can uh, do the work, you're enthusiastic, and you're ready to learn. Because the first few years in anybody's career is all about learning. It's not about making money or, or getting a high position or something. Positions are, are only there to, to be shown later on once you've got the necessary experience and confidence. So I think all I want to say is that uh, we do have a lot of potential Tanzanians, very good Tanzanians, who have the right education, but they are just not skilled enough to step into the industry straight away. And they need to be ready to get the skills right first before expecting too much. One more aspect I just want to add at the end here is that we are in the plastics industry. At this point in time, there isn't a single college or university in Tanzania that teaches plastics processing. And that is a major, major gap. Um, I will tell you very frankly that today we as a company have to source expatriates on the plastic processing side because we do not have locals who are able to, to understand the technology and to, to uh, process the plastic as it is needed for a sensitive industry like ours. Now, that is, that is quite a big problem, uh, if I can put it that way. It's one thing to be able to run a machine, which obviously we run with our local Tanzanian uh, personnel, but to understand the technology behind the plastic and the chemistry behind the plastic is a totally different ballgame. And that is a major gap that Tanzania must address now if we are to really push the local content agenda forward. So I would like to stop there, perhaps, and maybe welcome questions later on uh, on the subject. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very brilliant contribution. 
and I think everyone is noticing something. And at the end, we'll have the reaction from the members from the floor. So if you have some questions, please just write them. We can see some people in the public chat. They present some of the questions. Please, there come a time where I allow you to address questions. Please allow me to have one more eminent panelist before I get a break to my co-host, Paul, if he is in good network right now. And I would like to introduce to you my engineer, Eroho, from Nigeria. He is a mechanical engineer, also participated in different projects uh, around the world, especially in onshore and offshore uh, projects. Mr. Ero, here in Tanzania, current, we expect to have projects of transporting crude oil from Uganda to Tanzania. Please, would like to hear from you, as you have been participated in different projects uh, concerning pipeline construction. How can you compare and tell us the skills and the competence that graduates should equip with to be competent to work in such kind of projects all over the world. You are welcome, Mr. Eroho. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Can you hear me, please? Am I clear? Can you hear me, Friscus? Definitely, I can hear. I can hear you, please. Yes, okay, so like as introduced, my name is uh, Engineer Eloho Ugojo from Nigeria. I currently work for an EPC company in, uh, in Port Harcourt currently. So like you ask, you, your basic question is on pipelines. Fortunately for me, I have worked on uh, many pipeline projects across uh, Nigeria, Ghana, the Republic, um, and the Kurdistan crude oil pipeline, I, which I participated in in uh, Germany. But now, my major problem with most students is every person that have got this attitude that they want to get a, a, a job in SPDC, Chevron, Exxon Mobil, uh, BP, and the big companies. And the reality is, especially in Nigeria, you you know the population we have got in Nigeria. Those companies can't even take in uh, hundred people per year. So, and you've got over 20,000 graduates coming out every year. So how do you get a job in this country? It's not, it, it, it's not going to be possible. And you've got a whole volume of students coming from US, um, UK, with good degrees, foreign experience, foreign knowledge, and everything. So it's really a big challenge. So now, how do you single out yourself to get a job in this industry? Like for me, I immediately I graduated, I got my first job in, in Ghana. The company is a Nigeria based, but they've got a branch in Ghana. So, but what did I do? I, I have to go through a lot of sacrifice in during my academic days. I have to acquire knowledge in softwares, theoretical training, practical training, and stuff like that. Like pipelines. If you if you want to get a job in pipeline, I will really the easier job you can get is start with a design firm. That's the companies that do this, the, the design of the pipelines. So like uh, the former company I work for, ILF Consulting Engineers, they are very good. They are um, worldwide recognized companies into oil and gas pipeline design. So, and these are skills you can, you can actually get in school, only that you might not get the total understanding of what is being taught. Like pipelines, what, as a mechanical guy, what do you really need? You'll be calculating hoop stress, longitudinal stress, expansion, and these are all things you've learned from linear expansivity, uh, from uh, the normal stre strength of materials in your school. So basically all the knowledge you need is being taught in school, but the problem we have with our academic system is there is no practical um, tailoring of what we learn in school to this. So now, as a student, the first advice I will give to you is you must go beyond the normal school curriculum. Like me, I have to go extra mile. I learned over 20 softwares when I was in school, both the ones that are not applicable to mechanical engineering and the ones that are applicable. I learned AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Autodesk Inventor, um, Solid uh, Edge, Oracle 3G, Micromedia, Dreamweaver, a whole lot of software. So what was I trying to achieve? If I come out of the school, any opportunity I find, I try to grab it. 
So, and I try to meet some guys that are already working to mentor me that, oh, boss, what should I do? Where should I do? Where should I go? Which local skill do I need to acquire? You need to acquire skills in, in typical welding. If you're not going to get the knowledge, acquire some typical basic knowledge about welding because these are things you're going to use in the industry. Then you must acquire a very good knowledge in analytics, which the software that will do this for you is Microsoft Excel, MathCAD, or MATLAB. So because the basic skill an employer is going to look for as a fresh graduate is small, small software's analytical skills. So because you don't really, you don't typically have experience in the field. So couple, maybe if you've had like an internship in one of the companies and you've had like a minor experience, couple with your good thinking, your analytical knowledge, you are employable, I tell you, you are good to go. I never, I, despite the population we had in a year, I had over three job opportunities within three months. Because anytime I try to meet people, oh, sir, I can offer this, I can offer this, then we say, okay, let's give him a try. I think he has got something to offer. But in a situation, you just come out of the school blank headed with a first class degree, second class, a second class degree. You don't even know um, AutoCAD. You don't know how to do use Microsoft Excel. You cannot add any value to the company. So the company will just say, no, I don't think I have the time to train anyone. Most of the companies are just, uh, they are not really up there. So they need someone that can add at least a little value to what they want to, what they want to achieve. Therefore, your pipelines, like in Nigeria, we've got a whole lot of pipelines. We have the gas distribution network in Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Abuja, basically. So, and we've got the crude transportation system from upstream, maybe to processing facilities and stuff like that. These are great employers. You've, this, you, we find a whole lot of employees coming into the construction sector and a whole lot of employees coming into the design sector. The operation of pipelines is not going to absorb a whole lot of persons. They don't need a few operators in a control state, in a control room or something like that. So basically, the, the highest number of employers in the pipeline sector are the design firms and the construction firms. So this is where you're going to get a job. So if you're going to get a job in this field, you need to acquire at least basic knowledge. Your analytical knowledge must be top-notch as a fresh graduate because that is only what is going to sell you. And I don't know the population of Tanzania, but if you are in Nigeria and you are not serious, I tell you, the first three years you've gone and you've left everything in school, you resort to street hustling. So what I'm going to say is for Tanzania, you've got, I think your population shouldn't be up to half of Nigeria. You've got a great opportunity. And thank you. You just brought this up into this forum. And it's really a nice thing to tell you guys that you need to up your skills. As a chemical engineer, you need to learn uh, like high seas. Um, ChemCAD, a whole lot of simulation softwares that will acquaint you with what at least have an idea of what is happening in the industry. So not that they call you for an interview and they ask you and then you just go blank. Then they say, oh, this, this guy is not employed. And someone comes from US or from UK, he has a very good knowledge of what is happening in the industry. Then they ask him the question, then he just blow off everything. Then you are just at home. Then you start saying, oh, the guy has got the foreign certificate or stuff. Like that. No, it's not like that then I will really advise the government of Tanzania to go the way the Nigeria government went. There was a local content program in Nigeria in 1999 or around 2000, it was very serious. For every foreigner you have, you must attach a local to this foreigner to acquire knowledge from him. So you can see the Nigeria oil and gas sector is now mostly dominated by Nigerians. And we've got a whole lot of experts in this field. Like I, I can tell you, there is no pipeline job that um, I, I can't handle because I have worked on pipeline projects for SP, um, SPDC, um, NNPC, the Ghana um, Gas, which is the, Ghana, the, the national company of um, Ghana. And I've worked on Kurdistan crude oil pipeline. So I can tell you, this is a few, not, you can acquire a whole lot of knowledge that makes you employable. Then for the upstream, you're not going to acquire much knowledge about upstream. That's why I'm going to beg you, please, Take your eyes off the big companies. I'm not saying you can't get a job there, but take your eyes off those guys. Start from scratch. Start from a very small company. Don't look at the money you're going to earn. Look at the value you're going to add to yourself. Engineering is a field, is a, is a ladder. In two, three years, you, you might achieve, you might achieve a, um, an achievement you never expected. Because in two, three years, you should have acquired a good knowledge if you are working with a very good guy. Let them use you dirty. 
go there, see. Don't say, oh, I'm an engineer. I can't, I can't work under a technician or a technologist. He's got uh, a very low grade. He does not have a good degree. Like the guys manufacturing pipes. If you go there, you might be working with technicians. Guys that have never been to, to maybe PNG level, maybe guys that just acquire some basic technical training. Go there, learn from them, acquire, manage your school knowledge with what they're doing. You will be a better guy supervising them. So that's the difference you should make. So uh, for the oil and gas from the pipeline is really a very, a very narrow field. I'm going to say if you have to get a job in pipeline sector, it will be in the design sector or the construction sector. The, the control sector, which is the maintenance, is very minor. It happens just once in a while. So it's not somewhere that you're going to say, oh, I'm going to get a, a permanent job in, a, in an operational company or something like that. They, are, they employ few people. So basically, please up your game. Learn, go for trainings. Go for software trainings. Go for analytical training about your field, not just software. If it is pipeline, go for a typical pipeline training that will teach you what is the pipeline, how, what, what do I need to learn about pipeline, the calculations, the, how to produce alignment sheets, how to route pipeline, work with software like ArcGIS, Google Earth Pro, work with AutoCAD, work with various software, Caesar 2 for stress analysis. These are typical things. We've done them in school, but it's just that the school does not give you the practical explanation. Everything we do in pipeline, all the principles we apply from uh, hoop stress, they are all done in school. You know hoop stress, you know longitudinal stress, they are all in your textbook in school. So basically you've done everything but just look for a technical training that will expose you to what you actually need. Engineer, can you hear me, please, Engineer? I can hear you, yes. Thank you very much for a such nice contribution to graduates and students. And please allow me to stop you there and then we'll be back to you soon. All right, you're welcome. I can see reaction from a member from the four. There is a lot of contribution going on the public chat so we'll go very fast and uh, we have to allow questions from the participants oh johanna can you hear me please oh johanna yes i can hear you mr priscus hello. okay thank you very much i hello. want to hello. hello i can hear you hello i want to hand this chance to you so that you can talk up to engineer Gachi, engineer Cheru, and engineer Renatus Mahui from MRI, also engineer Nyorobi. Please, the floor is yours, Mr. Po. Thank you, Mr. Priscus. Unfortunately, I've been here experiencing a, a, a network problem since start of this meeting. So I find out it is somehow difficult for me to copy out, to, to cope up with this meeting. But uh, I, I go somehow to hear from, from Mr. Almia and from from Mr. Uh, from Mr. Eloho. Hello, Mr. Priscus, can you hear me? I can hear you, please, bro. Hello. Hello, Mr. Priscus. You can proceed, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you, please. Okay, let me keep on. Okay. Uh, okay, I think there is problem with Paul Johanna's network. And please, Paul, allow me to proceed. Unfortunately, you cannot join us. So I will go on with handling and hosting the meeting. And current, I'm going to engineer Gati Muita. Engineer Gati from Norway, Norway, can you hear me, please? 
Yes, exactly. Yes, I do. Thank hear you very you. much, Nina Gat, for joining us. You are the icon yes. of the country. Everyone uh, in petroleum industry knows you because of your passion to share your knowledge from day one to the graduates and students in different universities through different programs. Even we invited you, when we invited you to this meeting, it was very positive. So please, you are welcome on board to present your contribution regarding the topic that we currently uh, discussing. I would just like to continue where Eloho has just ended uh, on the skills required for the students to be able to compete nationally and uh, uh, inter internationally. So as we have heard from uh, industry, they really specify that they require um, good skills, which are very oriented to different uh, requirements in the, in the industries. But for sure, as uh, what we know for our, our tomorrow's graduates, we, re we really don't know the challenges. And uh, also we don't know the job opportunities that will exist when they graduate. So my thinking is it's really important to equip our students with sufficient skills that can be transferred and uh, that can make them to be able to, to face the future in terms of uh, different job opportunities that may exist. It may be maybe outside uh, oil and gas, because as we know now, it's cyclic. They should get prepared um, to face uh, the future, depending the different circumstances. I would like to give an experience uh, using uh, how I'm evaluated uh, in terms of uh, my performance in Equinor trying also to, to emphasize the skills that uh, my employer is trying to track on my daily performance. In Equino, we have this uh, evaluation, which is based on 50% on how you perform your task. Maybe it's a project, how you are delivering. So 50% it's how you do it. The how it's the, the technical part of it, how you use the softwares and how the, the quality of the work that you are, you are really presenting or uh, you are executing. And the 50% will come on, um, uh, on, on the what, what is the technology and how, it's, it's how you work together with your, with your team to deliver that kind of results. So when it, when it comes to the academic perspective, what it's the, tech, uh, the technology and the technique and the softwares that I don't want to go into, into them because Elohi has uh, talked about. And then um, how it's the, the soft, soft skills that uh, we need to equip our, our students with. And uh, from my experience, uh, the most important soft skills that have been uh, trying to lift me up and uh, ensuring that I, I perform well, it's how do I cooperate with other people? How is it when it comes to teamwork? Because it does not matter that you are just good in uh, technical designing or working with software, but at the end of the day, you will become a leader of a project. How are you cooperating with others? How do you behave in the team dynamics? As well, communication, how good are you to communicate your concept, your presentation skills, your confidence on uh, uh, how you handle uh, uh, the situation you are carrying to, to solve as an as a empl employee or as a student. So teamwork, communication, and uh, I also uh, have this that you need to be able to solve problems. Uh, we have heard from the industry, they need people who can solve problems, who can really show that they are competent enough. And those are the skills that we want our students to graduate with. Um, they have talked already with the digital literacy. 
And here there is a lot of opportunity. Professor Richard has talked about the ability to find, evaluate, utilize data and create content using information technologies as, such as computer and internet. We are going to a digitalized world. So you should be ready also to, to figure out what if I don't get uh, opportunity to work in oil industry, can I use my computer skill? Can, can I use my internet to start something that will work out? At the end of the day, I can do while waiting to, to find other opportunities where I can fit in uh, according to what I have learned from the university. And of course, uh, my experience, I see that employer wants someone who, who definitely will be a leader. You can supervise and uh, direct other people. Uh, at the university, I know we, we normally have also those kind of uh, leadership roles. I will encourage uh, students to really go and uh, try to participate on those ones because through that you will start to have uh, leadership roles that also can uh, place you well in, uh, in the industry. Uh, employer also want to find an, uh, an employee who is able to, to understand uh, herself or himself and also understand other people's uh, uh, emotions. And that's what we call emotional intelligence because sometimes you just not uh, need that you just think about yourself. You need to think about the team you're working with, the society you're working with, uh, you are, you, how you talk to your manager and those kind of the things uh, you should have. Sometimes they are not taught at school, but it's very important even to be able to control your own emotion and uh, as well be able to be flexible. Uh, there, Osman has talked about that don't just think about your certificate that I'm graduating with a certificate of maybe petroleum engineering and then that's what you anticipate to do when you graduate. Of course, you should think that some, sometimes things won't go as you plan, so you need to be uh, flexible to adapt different scenarios as well your employer will also demonstrate uh, that he wants you to be willing to, to even to work outside your expertise. So that's how you should get prepared and think about those kind of um, uh, skills. And just uh, I'm almost concluding here as well, uh, work ethics, employer will not follow you that uh, you are punctual or you are late. He expects you that uh, you will perform your job with excellency because he pay you. So you have to perform your job uh, at a very high quality. So work ethics, punctuality, how you carry yourself, your conduct, it's very important. Of course, we should not forget about uh, entrepreneurial skills because you never know when you finish if you're gonna get jobs. So you should be prepared also for that. And uh, just to comment and encourage students that it's not too late to, to develop a skill. What you need to do, just identify the skill that you are lacking. And uh, as many people have said, go seek for online uh, courses to strengthen the skills. Also, you, you, you just need to take more responsibility at school. Uh, just uh, try to, uh, to even to, uh, you, you can ask, and do other tasks that was not even allocated to you, just to build that competence and uh, have that skills. And uh, be ready as well to be dirty before you get that uh, opportunity that you will love to have. So you have to start from grassroots and build your career as you go up. Yes. Thank you very much, Engineer Agat, all the way from Nor Norway. And please, the uh, panelist, Dr. Shahid, can you hear me, please? Yes, brother, I can hear very well. Yeah, some people are getting trouble to join us. Please, can you fix that? Yeah, yeah. I can see they are texting me in my WhatsApp. They are getting hard to join us. Yeah, maybe they have the problem from their end because here everybody joining those who are popping up, so they are being joined. I think they have their own problem, I guess. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Dear panelists, let us proceed very quickly. And this time, allow me to go to engineer Renatus Mahuyu from uh, Mineral, Resources, Mineral Resources Institute in Dodoma. He's also a consultant, engineer, and also trainer in different online trainings. As the previous panelists have contributed, they have said online training is one of the basic to prepare graduates to enter in the employment. So please, engineer Renatus from Dodoma, you are welcome shortly and a brief four minutes to describe your contributions so that we can also hear from the rest of the panelists. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me well, Mr. Piscu? Yes. Yes. Okay, I go by the name Renatus Mahuyu. I'm working now, currently I'm working in the Mineral Resources Institute in Dodoma where we do training students on diploma of petroleum geoscientist, but also apart from being working in the Mineral Resources Institute, but also I'm having my online platform. Have I heard like most of the member of panelists, they are being, they are being encouraging students like to attain some online training about softwares. So for me, I think I'm going just quickly for due to the to, to the time. I have my petroleum software online training. It's my platform that we give out the online education to most petroleum students. Uh, so in my platform, of course, what we do, we just train students on the mostly used software in the petroleum industry. So we do Lizeva engineering, we do uh, we do Lizeva modeling, Lizeva simulation. So if you have you, you need those kind of skills, you can just go in through our platform, and then you, we, we can train you on that uh, on the software you need to, to to know. So what I can encourage due to the to the topic we have given out here, we said to understand the opportunities and gaps in petroleum industry. We know like. Uh, especially in our country, most of our students like they lack this knowledge of softwares. So, for me, of course, I'm also I graduated in 2007 uh, in China. So the gap I saw, uh, especially in the oil industry, like we as uh, like most of the students, we lack this knowledge of software. So for me. Uh, when I came back, like here in uh, at, at our country, I decided just to establish this kind of software training. So, for you, I, I think here most of uh, most of you guys, there are some students, as we have been advertised, uh, we have been advised by Professor Richard, like we need now to 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 equip our knowledge and skills on online issues, uh, on online issues, on social uh, on med social medias and digital. So for me, I think it's a good time now. If you have free time, you can just search on, uh, on the internet where you can learn some new skills. And these new skills, you can get them in this, like uh, in some softwares, uh, some, 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 some platforms, which provide something like softwares and something like that. So I really want just to advise you, if you need something like this one, I will share a link. Uh, in our charts here, and then anyone who will be interested, we will welcome you. You can just register, and then we can train you in any software you want. But not, mostly now we do in reserve modeling and numerical simulation. That's all. So I think that's what I, I wanted just to share with you guys. Hello. Thank you very much, Engineer Arena Tusma. Who are you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Mr. Almenya Osman Munga was asking who was presenting. I think he has a problem. Uh, the one who was presenting was engineer. You are muted, Priscus. You are muted. Oh, I'm very sorry. 
I was saying that uh, Mr. Almeja Osman Munge was asking who was presenting. The one who was presenting was Engineer Arena Tusmahuyu from Mineral Resource Institute. And this time, let me welcome uh, the one presenting from the screen. I think is Engineer Emmanuel, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, uh, I'm Emmanuel. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Right now, I'm based in Norway. Uh, I'm a reservoir engineer. Uh, I graduated my master's degree last year, and I just uh, started uh, working with Equino March this year. So I'm very fresh from school. <laughs> yeah, so my uh, my advice that I can have for, to my fellow graduates and students in Tanzania, we need to have a, an international mindset. We need to brand ourselves. We need to be confident on what we know and what we are learning. Because I've seen, like, for example, even in the process that I passed through uh, in the recruitment process, uh, it's really it's, it's really challenging. And uh, people are, re are real ready. I mean, people are from all over the world. I mean, people are very confident on what they know and what they, they have. So, and, and to most Tanzanians, it's like we normally, we feel like shy. Uh, I mean, uh, feeling proud of what you know and what you think you can deliver. So I would like to advise my fellow Tanzanians and everybody who is listening to me right now, if you are a graduate or you are a student, you need to be uh, to brand yourself. You need to, to make yourself ready. I mean, you need to prepare your hands ready to compete worldwide. You need to visit, I mean, the websites of uh, different international companies. And if you are, you are a graduate, make sure you click uh, the career section of the websites of different uh, uh, companies. There are opportunities there. But the thing is, we just need to be really are brave enough to fight for the battle because the opportunities are still there. Oil and gas industry is here to uh, to stay. There's no way that we are going to to get out of oil and gas uh, 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 in 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 the in the world energy. The contribution of oil and gas uh, in the world energy pie chart will continue to be big. Uh, so we are in the right direction. Don't give up. Uh, just. Uh, be confident on what you know and what you're pursuing. Make the best of what you have right there and get ready to compete internationally. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Emmanuel from Norway. Okay, let me now go very quickly to Engineer Cheru and also engineer, you start engineer Cheru and the next will be engineer Alex. Both are my lectures from the Islam Institute of Technology. So you as a, an academician want to hear, how do you prepare the students, the graduates so that they can engage? We have seen so many uh, contribution from the panelists. The problem is from the preparation of the graduates. So please, engineer Alberto Cheru will start and engineer uh, Alex Stefano, very briefly, so that we can allow the member from the floor to have some questions, then we'll wind up. Engineer Alberto Cheru, can you hear me, please? Okay, Engineer Alex Stefano. Okay. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Priscus, um, Alexi. Um, just a part-time tutorial assistant at the Dar es Salaam Institute of Technology. Uh, also, I'm working for EPCM Holdings, which is a South African company, and I have a prior experience working uh, with uh, Schlumberger as a logging while drilling in uh, feed specialist. Uh, actually, uh, it's a very nice uh, in, uh, initiatives, by the way, and uh, I've heard uh, uh, so many uh, from the experts who explained, especially what is needed for the graduates or what they're expecting, especially for those who are receiving uh, the graduates from the academic institutions. Uh, uh, what we can say, uh, maybe inside of uh, academicians, uh, the, actually, yes, uh, there is a gap, and especially or particularly in Tanzania, uh, where, uh, for example, now we have a lack of activities. It's a bit difficult to, <coughs> to expose the students for the practical training. 
even though for our curriculums we are we are it's one of the thing which we really insist uh, or we we take much care of it to to our students to make sure that they have uh, enough practical training but uh it, it's a bit difficult for for the due to real uh, situation now in the country uh but what we can encourage our students as uh, professor richard rochungura said we have uh, so many online uh, platform uh where the students can get uh the uh, or can be trained even though maybe it can be a kind of simulation or virtual training but it it can be enough for example i can uh, i can give an example of myself i mostly learned a lot of software through a youtube channel which can be one of the best thing also this uh this initiative i hope uh, as our students you learned a lot also you at least you 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 have a kind of simulation of what is needed yeah in the industry so apart from all of this down uh, downtime and everything also i think we still need to find how we can work or how we can get experienced also we thanks uh, uh various stakeholders like uh armia i think he owned uh the company or is working with a company to receive our, our students for practical training also i can use this platform to encourage him or uh, the people of his kind to help us as, as much as they can and uh, we always welcome the the feedback from the industry to see how we can we can boost our training thank you Thank you very much, Engineer Alex Buko. And please allow me now to go to Thraye Hemed Safe. Thraye, please, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Priestess. Thank you very much. Thraye is Tanzanian. She's Tanzanian, studying in Cyprus. So she opted to go in Cyprus for education. Please, in very brief way, we want to hear your contribution on how can you compare the education background or education you have acquired in Cyprus, and how will you utilize that education to bring changes in your country? Please try it. So thank you so much, Priscus. Thank you for organizing this, for inviting me and everyone who partook in this. I'm very excited that the whole panel was very amazing. So I myself am studying here in northern part of Cyprus. If you're aware, like the island is divided. I'm in the Turkey side. So the knowledge I gained here, like I myself, despite comparing the education standards of Cyprus or Tanzania, I always wanted to go outside the country to diversify my experience, kind of. So here, what I loved, like the university I'm studying in is a leading university in Turkey. It has a branch, a smaller branch here. Now, because of the smaller campus size, we have more interaction with our faculty members. And the assistance we get from them is incredibly amazing. For example, uh, I wanted to pursue and focus myself on research studies. And I, I could do that with the help of the faculty. I presented my research work in, you know, in the European contest. If you're aware of the student paper contest, which is held in every region, Africa has its own region. Now I present in the European region. Now the standards of the education here helped me to actually gain the first place in all of Europe. So overall, it's really amazing. And also uh, with regards to the way how we are doing our courses in the final year, I just graduated this year and our technical electives in the final year were more focused on practical approach, like using the softwares. Like I think Ms. Dati and Professor Richard also talked about this, like digitalization, meaning like we should make use of the softwares and the programming languages which are very prominent right now in the oil and gas industry. So most of our projects were based on us actually being able to use the softwares to be able to be competent in the industry overall. So that's what I can say I gained from here and I feel like kind of confident, not fully because I do not have that much industrial experience, but it gives you some confidence of the overall how to manage a project and conduct the whole research work on your own using CMG, Python, and Excel, definitely. That's all I have to say. If you have any question, maybe I need to approach exactly. 
Thank you, Therese. We'll be back to you, and some questions will also be addressed to you soon. Thank you. Okay, allow me now to call Frank Mizengo. Frank Mizengo, he is also currently working with EPCM Holdings. Please, Frankie, welcome. And please tell us what the challenge you are facing currently at the recent graduate and you have got an opportunity to work with EPCM Holdings. What challenge do you face? As we have said, there is a gap between the, the knowledge we acquire in schools and the the requirements, industrial requirements. Please, Frankie, let us know those challenges you are facing currently and how do you address them? Okay, thank you, Priscus. Hi, everyone. Do you hear me, Priscus? Yes, Hello? Frank, I can hear you. I can okay. hear you, Frank. I, okay, as Priscus introduced me, my name is Frankie Mizengo. I'm a petroleum engineer. I'm working with EPCM now, the South African company. Uh, but before joining with EPCM, I joined with TPDC, where I worked there as an intern. And there, I learned something that is missing from, from the students at universities, because uh, when I went there and now, when I'm working with EPCM, I have little knowledge in various softwares such as AFT Arrow, the software that is used to simulate the fluid dynamics in pipeline design. Uh, and I have struggling with the international codes and the standards. As as all we know, in our universities, we are not taught about the, this international standard and codes in designing. So this was a great challenge to me. And I have accepted it, and, but uh, I'm trying my level best to learn these international codes and the standards that are used in designing. And uh, I'm working on my level best to try to make sure that I'm learning much about AutoCAD, Aspen, ISIS, Safety Arrow, and the Pipeline Studio for simulation. So what I will advise for the students at the universities, it is to take time and learn about this international, and learn about this international course and the standards that are used in designing then they must learn about the software that are used in simulations. And then they must seek internship so that they can gain experience because uh, the experience that we have from the universities and the experience that we get from the real industry, they are two different. So they must ensure that they get internship and learn. And then once they get internship, then they must make connections to ensure that they meet with different people and they must use different platform like this online meeting so that they can be, so that they can learn and improve on their skills. So this is what I have to share with the panel. Thank you, please. Thank Please, Kus, you are muted. Please, Kus, you are muted. Please, Kus. Uh, Hello, Frankie. Hey. I have Thank shared. you very much for your contribution. Okay. We have Thank the you. network problem. So I've okay. been out of the platform, so I'm using another alternative to join here. 
Okay, I have shared my experience. Yeah. Thank you very much, Frank Mizengo. Frank uh, is very hardworking person. I was with him when I was doing my industrial practical training at CPDC, and Engineer Dora Ernest was our supervisor. So it is very lucky day to have you all here today. So now definitely allow me to go to Engineer Nyorobi. Please, Engineer Nyorobi, can you hear me please from Norway? Uh, Nairobi has left. Hello, yeah, I, I, I am back. I can see on the okay. chat that he has left. Yeah. Hello, I I left, but uh, yeah, I can contribute. Yes, uh, Nairobi, but from his place. Yeah, I had as a commitment, but uh, let me contribute in short. Basically, yeah, the previous contributors have contributed a lot, and uh, all the points are valuable and useful for you, uh, students and. Uh, probably graduates who are listening here. Uh, I just want to quickly say the point that has been said by Alimia. I don't know if I pronounced the name correctly, but he mentioned about, okay, in school we learn about principles and fundamentals, but in real world, things are very different. You have to have the practical experience to be able to deliver. But I see the gap in our education system, for example, in Tanzania, we don't have opportunity. For example, I work as a reservoir engineer, but here I use a lot of softwares. I, I, use, I use a lot of tools in order to deliver, but in school, we don't have that one. And if you say that, okay, these things have to be done for the students who haven't been uh, exposed it to work environment is very difficult because in school you will find that uh, these tools are very expensive and the students they are not able <laughs> to to get access to use these tools which they will use in the industry so i think this will be the companies are obliged to 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 give the students the opportunity to do internships so that they can practice what they learn from schools and also they need to ensure that they develop them in a right way, in a right manner, so that they can cope. Then, then the responsibility of the students is to ensure that you quickly learn and adapt to the environment so as to deliver. So if you are given one year internship, show that you are capable of contributing, of using the fundamentals and the change the fundamental to its practical way. So that is very important for the students. So my call here is like, for the companies, they have to be patient for, for the students, for the graduate. You don't expect to get a graduate and a deliver as how the experienced person deliver, because these things are not taught in school. And it's not only in Tanzania, even I studied in Norway, you don't get what you get in school. You don't see it at work. So. You, all the company and student are obliged. You have responsibilities to, to, to do your best. Uh, Dr. Richard and Gat, they mentioned about computer competence. That is very important nowadays as you are moving into digitalization. This is just a wake up call for the students. You have to ensure that, uh, at least for the people who want to become reservoir engineers like me, you have to have some sorts of uh, computer science skills because you have to be able even you don't need to know a lot of language programming language but at least you have to know some of the language even to read not necessarily to write because most of the thing will be reading so you have to have the basics of of, of programming the other things that we tend to ignore for example i come from tanzania i i know the education background in tanzania we don't get these uh, soft skills Gatti mentioned about collaboration. When you are given a placement to work, you have to ensure that you are able to collaborate with experienced people so they will transfer their knowledge and the skills to you. Then after time, experience will come with time. Then for you, you will be able to contribute. 
and uh, also communication like you are an engineer you know the technical all of the things but you might be asked to go and present your results to the manager maybe the manager is not um uh, petroleum engineering he doesn't know about petroleum engineering he doesn't know about science he knows about other different things but he's a manager and they have to communicate with, with him or her so you have to have the skills the, the, the way that you can communicate your results in a good way in a clear way so we have some kind of language barriers which we have to really understand and know how we can communicate with other pairs. If you talk to a fellow technical engineer, you can use those technical jargons, but when you're talking to management, it's a different story. So communication skills is very important. Because of the limited time, I will contribute as of my points in WhatsApp group. But for now, that is what I can say so far. Thank you. I'm going for the last eminent panelists, and then I will allow the member from the floor to contribute, uh, to ask question or any reaction you have to the panelists, and then we will see if we can have uh, more time. And closing up, remark from Professor Eero Chungura, from Madam Yovin Do, and Dr. Shahid. So currently, I'm going to Mr. Shukuru Amos. Everyone here has spoken of communication skills, and you are a content writer. You have written extensively in education. Please, briefly, in three minutes, Mr. Amos Shukuru, if you can hear me, please let us hear your contribution among the panelists here. Shukuru, can you hear me, please? Dr. Shahid, can you hear me, please? Yes, yes, I can hear. OK, I think it's problem of Shukuru. So please, let me now have a few minutes to allow contributions from the member from the floor. If you have any question, please uh, turn on your mic, or you can write your name at the, at the chat, and I'll mention you, please. If you have any question, please, now write your name at the public chat and i'll mention you to address your question okay i have seen majengo farm you are welcome majengo majengo Please, Dr. Shahid, help to unmute Majengo. He's getting problem in unmuting his mic. Majengo. Okay, I think there is problem with Majengo. Yeah, he has the problem, technical okay. problem from it. Okay, any other member, please, if you have any contribution, please write your name now. We're about to wind up the meeting. Anyone with question, please? Yes, Mchumi, you're welcome, Mchumi, Fadiri Mchumi. Yes, mister, how are you? I'm very fine. You are welcome, Chumi. Shortly and briefly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I had just a little, we had just a little, a, a little explanation about, about the industry and the current situation in Tanzania by Engineer Dora. Personally, I'm just a graduate petroleum geologist. So I have been making a follow-up since the beginning of this meeting. 
but I've not heard anything about the geologists and chemists who are being produced from different universities like University of Dar es Salaam. So I'd like to understand the, 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 the measures that are being taken by TPDC about these students who are graduating from different industries, from different universities in, 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 in our country. How are they being incorporated in the system in order to acquire some skills which can, can, can make them uh, marketable to, to the nation, to, to, the, to the, the national companies or international companies? Please, Engineer Dora, can you answer my question? Okay, thank you. Um, very very briefly, uh, we are out of the time. Very briefly. Okay, in TPDC we have uh, quite a number, good number of uh, geologists, geochemists, and geophysics, and and they are doing a lot of things in the upstream section. And uh, up to now, we have more than uh, more than thirty of them in the upstream section. So we still need them because the industry is also growing up. We have a lot of uh, a lot of fields, and uh, in three months to come, I think we are going to to recruit some of the of the of the graduates. Uh, you have to go through the Utumish portal, and uh, you set up all the CV and resume there, and all the um, recruitment will be done through the Utumish portal. And uh, apart from this, uh, geologists, uh, geochemists, and geophysics. We have uh, different uh, engineers. We also recruit different engineers, like uh, uh, civil, civil engineers, because we have a lot of civil works to do, things like on the um, on the pipe work, on the um, high pressure pipeline, on the low pressure pipeline. We really need to have these uh, civil engineers on on board. So the opportunity is there, and you are also allowed, and you are welcome to TPDC you can start up with the internship. You apply for the internship, and then after, through the process, it's very easy for you to get connection. Professional social networking is very important. I usually tell my, my, uh, grad, my graduates who are supervised that uh, they have used that time during internship to make professional social networking. And there you can also and thank you very much, Engineer Dora. I think the one asked the question now is fine with the question from Engineer Dora. So soon there will be opportunities. Right here we are discussing opportunities. So please, guys, be ready for the opportunity. And now allow me to uh, mention the one also who wants to ask the question, I think it's Fazili Machumi. You're welcome, Fazili. Now, Fazili is the one who was asking. Uh, Fazili was the one who was asking here. Uh, Majengo Farm. Please, Majengo. Hello. Yes, very brief. Yeah, uh, my name is. Yes, uh, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, my name is Baraka Majengo, a student from Arusha Technical College. I'm taking a diploma for uh, pipework oil and gas engineering. Uh, my question will go direct as this. Uh, what's a qualification for someone to be a pipeline inspector? As we know, for CNG, that's used in cars or vehicles, uh, someone required to have a CSA certificate. This is a certificate from people from Canada to be an inspector for those those, those those cylinders you see in vehicles. Uh, so my question would be, uh, what's the qualification for someone to become a pipeline inspector here in Tanzania? Also, a uh, second question would be, I uh, will go direct to Mr. Almir. Uh, did, did Prasco have any relationship with Gasco? Uh, those are my questions, ma'am. I'm finished. 
Halo. Ya. Ya, halo. Ya, welcome sir, Mr. Almia. Okay, so I will answer quickly. Um, in terms of a relationship, yes, we have worked with Gasco several times. Uh, Gasco is one of our esteemed clients. Uh, as uh, you have learned that they are involved in uh, downstream uh, distribution projects. So we have been supplying and installing pipes to projects that TPDC and Gasco have been conducting in the past. So that is our relationship with Gaspo, and uh, we continue to uh, cooperate uh, together. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I understand. Can you continue, Mr. Priscus? I'm finishing. Uh, then I want to even if Hello, I can Mr. get Priscus, the answer. Uh, Priscus, let, let me just answer the person that was asking a question on uh, the inspection. You can, there are various level of inspection you can achieve, but basically we have the API 570 inspection. That's the American Petroleum Institute inspection. And we, we got a C-suite, which is another inspection, which is certified welding inspector. So there are generally no local, there are international certification you need to acquire. It's not, it's not mostly local, it's certification locally, but Without the certification, you can as well attend typical inspection training before you go for all these certifications. I think that clears the, the question on the inspection. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Eroho. Please, the next one who wants to ask the question, please, you are welcome. I'm getting problem with NEPEC. So I cannot read the, the message currently. This is anyone with a question, you are welcome on board, please. There is a French one Makundi, Mr. Priscus. The French one Makundi, I can see him. Okay, please, French one Makundi. Red Sony Makundi. Thank you very much, dear panelists and members from the floor for a such nice uh, discussion. Please allow me now to have only five minutes and we wind up this meeting. It was very interesting. We cannot discuss here. And let me be honest to the time. Currently, I would like to welcome the last uh, panelist who will. Uh, utilize only two minutes and he is Dr. Shahid from India. As I mentioned earlier, he is the one who also helped us to facilitate this online conference. Dr. Shahid, as you have heard the young people and panelists discussing here, that people are expecting to work in different countries, especially for the area and against Indras. Please let us know about multicultural condition as you have been working with uh, activists and campaigning work I remember last webinar we had, we was discussing about black racism on black ethnicity. Please, Dr. Shahid, you are welcome on board two minutes to participate in this meeting and then we will wind up quickly. Thank you so much, Mr. Prisces. And I'm really thankful for bringing all those stalwarts and those who have spoken here and they have contributed immensely, you know, very uh, helpful for the young students, those who are aspiring to be in the industry and all. But one thing that I found the common, and uh, I still remember that the main point that uh, Mr. Uh, Ali Mia Usman, he highlighted, that education and the, uh, uh, the practical approach in the education system, that is completely missing, not only in 
uh, african region uh, it's it's a problem all over the globe you know so we are seeing that what we are is turning it is not being you know directly connected to the uh, work yeah, either the institutes is work institutes are working in the silos just for the degrees and all uh, they are not connected with the uh, demand the, and what kind of specialties and the skill is required so that, that is that gap is very much missing not only in one part of the world it's everywhere in india or you can say in the western countries also when you complete your study you come back to the professional life you have to go for one year or two year different kind of training which you have not studied uh, uh, in the college so that that, that time you know, how we have we have to manage those either the government education system they should very closely coordinate where while they are uh, making their syllabus and curriculum for the professionals they should keep in mind that what are the needs you know when we uh, they graduate are they able to cope with that situation and the demand what the company expects from any outcome outcomers and those who are graduates so these are the things that we have to understand and uh, very uh, very high uh, g- g- importance of very much importance of the technology that what we have seen now in the covid crisis that it has exposed that you know without this we were like you know nowhere we were the social media expert we were the uh, very good uh, technological expert but we were not using it very positively that uh, how we are using it now so now we have to understand that you know there are many good and the bad uh, uh, sides of the technology but once you are into it you have to think that how it can be integrated very well either in education or in the professional life or any any places where it is required so this uh, few things that i wanted to highlight another thing that as uh, precious mentioned that i have been working for the not only for indians or the youths uh, across uh, asian countries but also for the for the african youth those who are coming to india for a study you know we keep doing their leadership you know capacity building program that they should not just think about the job seeking you know once you are here you start just thinking about you pass your uh, uh, course and you go back and you get the good job and all but, but uh, have you thought that you are the lucky one that you you have got, got opportunity to read or go and study outside abroad because you are affluent but many of the, the country men those who cannot afford such kind of thing they are also expecting such kind of opportunities and all so once we start thinking in in a different mode like you know from job seekers to the job givers it is not going to solve the problem because their jobs are limited and the companies whatever they observe they go on the com- like merit basis they cannot accommodate everyone you know if you are Uh, pass out or you are graduate something so there are limitations so we have to think you know very uh, uh, in a bigger way that you know once you are getting trained you must think that you know some time down the line i should be creating some uh, kind of ecosystem that can accommodate many of uh, the my country men those who can not go to get the higher skill training or something away from their own country so these are the few things that i wanted to highlight because of the time constraint i don't want to elaborate much but we are we keep conducting these kind of global conferences all the time on the different issues not only about the skill or leadership also about this the problems going on in in their own country about their uh, uh, social problems or any uh, political problems we keep discussing we keep talking about the uh, uh, to strengthen the democracy in their own country so these are the few things and it's good opportunity for all of us to know each other to connect uh, globally and we keep uh, discussing like this that we can bring more and more ideas to integrate and to learn from each other thank you so much mr precious and thanks everybody those who have contributed here today and i i hope that uh, we'll meet again with some different topic and i have shared one link in the chat box that is a kind of survey global survey we are doing that we are finding out the very serious panelist those who can talk that how the covid or the any re- kind of racism or discrimination is hampering our education system health system employment sector how these are impact, affecting you know in a long term so that we are going to have it very soon so we would like to have your opinion as well we, if we convince and we can get then we will like to invite you for the global discussion thank you so much thank you very much dr shahid and please dear members 
and panelists, as Dr. Shahid said, please you can check the link and really participate in fighting against racism. Recently, we have had the killing of our brother Floyd, George Floyd. So racism can happen to anyone. Uh, I ask and call upon you to buy some terms and take a time to fill that form. We'll be participating in transformation and creating the common value among the people in the world. Amos, in one minute, please, if you can hear me, then we are going to wind up Amos. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Amos. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful session. Um, I, I was having problem with my previous device, so I switched on to, to, my, to my smartphone. So most of the contribution I was hoping to share, they have been shared by previous speakers. So what I'll just stress on, on digital skills is that the, the digital landscape in Tanzania is growing rapidly and companies are moving on, adapting digital transformation. So it, 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 it's a time for university students to, to, to be on the lookout. I mean, you need to, to have the necessary skills. I mean, if it's on online collaboration, uh, I mean, there's what we call Freelancing jobs and remote, remote, remote work. Can, can, can you be someone that can be trusted to work remotely? You, you need to, to be equipped with those skills. And, and the one thing I would like to, sh to say to university students, there's a platform called LinkedIn. It's, it's, it's a huge underutilized platform in Tanzania and yet a very powerful platform for building personal branding, connecting with top decision makers in Tanzania. But, but most students, they use it when they need a job. But they, they, you can use it to, to, to voice out your, your skills, your, your knowledge, so that people can, can see you as someone who is an authority in, 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 in your industry. You say you are a student in oil, oil and gas. Uh, is there any way you can let other audience to know that you are good at what you are doing? Do you have any insights that are interesting where, where you, can, you, can, you can invite, you can make other people thank you. with your content? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I will share a link to my works uh, as written so that the other people can, can, can read. I'm sorry for the technical error. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, brother. And I'm happy that you are here. Now we are going to wind up, and I'm going to give you 30 seconds to each of the following. Professor Richard Wilkengula also will follow up with the, uh, Madam Yovindo, and the final will have Madam uh, Engineer Dora Elness. Please, Professor Richard. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, it has been a wonderful uh, discussion, and um, I don't want to spend a lot of time. Uh, we have more. We have more to say, but uh, we have limited time. Um, I just want to tell you, uh, as, as uh, the young graduates, uh, that um, uh, your 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 certificates will not give you a ride. Your certificates will not give you a ride, but uh, your skills will give you a ride. And opportunities are there not to be given, but to be taken. Mm -hmm. So you have to use uh, some energy to take the opportunities. And thank you. Thank you very much. Please, Madam Yovindo. Ah, sorry, I had technical issues as well, which has flipped me off. Um, there was two parts that we nobody discussed today, and one of them was freelancing. I find that if a student was freelancing themselves into the industry, um, either at no cost at all, or just to ask for experience by giving, uh, by the, uh, allowing their expertise to be shared with the terminals or with um, uh, various uh, manufacturing companies. I'm sure that you guys will uh, uh, be able to network within 
uh, manufacturing companies. I would be also looking at the various products within the manufacturing companies. In, 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 like in, other, in our industry, you have loading arms, you have API couplers. Go and search all the different products that's available and then you'll know the names and the lingo that they speak and you can approach them and say you'd like to learn about their product um, if they can maybe send you some information once you're interested in the information then you go and you say to the the people there well can i maybe come and uh, and have a hands-on presentation you go and maybe have a hands-on presentation and then you work your way into it by either servicing a coupling or going onto a terminal and helping to service work with um, um, uh, uh, what you call it consulting engineers and contractors and once you go onto the terminal you meet the terminal managers you meet the supervisors and you just keep on networking 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 and once you have one skill behind you the next one will come again and the next one will come again and never ever ever give up thank you thank you very much madam yovindo please engineer dora ernest start the second okay my advice to the graduates and who are still in studies as you are preparing for your future don't get scared don't get yourself at the changes which are still going on in the sector. And when you're doing that, you have to be patient, be positive, be proactive, and open to change. And once you get the chance in the industry, be pro productive and cooperate with co-workers so that you can learn more, be, be proactive to what you are doing, and be able to learn the new things. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Dora. Dear panelists, dear participants and members from the floor, I would like to take this chance to extend my sincere thanks to my fellow organizers, organizing team, Mr. Charles Maziku, the graduate from University of Dodoma. Please, are you there, Charles? Thank you very much, Charles. Charles was one of the organizers, also Mr. Paul Johanna, Mr. Joseph Moyo, Mr. Agustino Moipas, and everyone who participated in one way or another. I also apologize for any inconvenience that had happened here, such as network and uh, not being honest to the time. I said it would be strictly 1.5 hour, but we are out of the time. I'm very sorry for everyone, but I also thank you all for first believing to my idea when i had this idea i have to introduce to my fellows and everyone was able to uh, take this as an opportunity i thank you very much for believing in me thank you engineer dora for having your time and everyone and in particular dr shahid you are an amazing please let us be connected and dear panelists this conversation this meeting was recorded so we'll share to you all and furthermore I think we'll have more feedback to the uh, WhatsApp group. And please allow me to terminate the group immediately after 30 seconds of the feedback for the, the group, as I said, will be involved as soon as this uh, conversation is over. I also uh, call upon you that we are going to think out of how we can strengthen up this discussion so that we can make sure we come together now and then. So I will soon notify you on how are we going to handle this, try to address problems to solve the challenges. Currently in Tanzania, for all the NGS students, we have very much problem of uh, IPT, field practical training. So, dear Mr. Almea, Arimia, Engineer Dora, and all who are working in different companies, Puma Energy, and I'm sorry if I did not mention any of, of the panelists. I'm very sorry we are out of the time. Please accept the application of fellow members who are striving or struggling to have placement for the industrial practical training. Let us work together to bring transformation in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.